Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are crime dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Blacklist, Season 10, Episode 16. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, uh, Heroin and the Task Force are backed into a corner because Dorf and Hudson are not letting this go. They're putting the pressure on um, him and Panabaker about this whole Task Force 836. And things are even more complicated because, like, right, they want to make this whole thing go public, but uh, Harold has to make it clear to Panabaker about the records being tampered with. And it's like, cool, the moment this comes to light, this is going to be the end of both of our careers, Harold, so you need to fix this in whatever way you can. So Harold is putting the pressure on Reddington, which Reddington is still very flippant about it, just kind of like so cavalier about it. Just not treating it like the threat that it is. Because it's almost like, yeah, whatever ends up coming our way, we just have to accept it. Because I think whatever Red's got planned, like I said, is his end game. That it's like, right, uh, the task force will be fine no matter how this plays out. But my part to play in it, I'm bowing out. Like in some shape or form. Once again, what that means, I don't know. What happens to the blacklist after like... I keep going back to it time and time again. Who is he going to pass it on to? He must... He might be trying to give the entire... He, because it was supposed to be Liz's inheritance. It was supposed to be her legacy to inherit the blacklist. But he might be setting it up so that the entire like he's going to go away, and he like like I said, whether it's just kind of like he lives his happily ever after away from all of this, kind of starts a new chapter in his life, or whether it's a, just a situation of like I just feel like now I'm thinking about it, it feels like he might be giving the blacklist to. I was always thinking, like, well, the person who probably eventually inherited would be Agnes, maybe. But I don't know if he'd want her mixed up in this world, even on the federal side of things, like her mom did. But I, I don't know. Because, like, much like Sia, I could definitely see it, a situation where Agnes would want to become an FBI agent just to be closer to her mom. So, I could see that being a, a, a situation. So, I don't know. I mean, it, that could be a direct parallel that kind of that you could potentially make. I could definitely see this series ending with like a time skip and we meet like an like a, a, a young adult, a, a, either a, like a late teen Agnes or like a, a young adult Agnes who might be like signing up for the FBI type of situation. I, I don't know. I just, it, once again, it just feels like you see the threads kind of like finally forming. So, either way. Red brings them a new case which revolves around Blair Foster. She is kind of like um, a, I think a local like DC fixer for a lot of people, and it revolves around this guy um, Larry who was trying to expose a company that she was helping. It's like this company that makes like cleaning supplies or something like that, but there's like all-purpose cleaner ends up having like a lot of like issues in it. Um, it's like Motor, was it Motor and Sun or something like that? It's a company and it has a lot of dangerous materials in it that, well, not a lot of dangerous, it's like something very specific in it that has killed people. Which, side note, I love that Larry's played by, uh, Seth, um, uh, Gillian from, um, The Walking Dead. I was like, hey! Uh, if you're unfamiliar, he plays Gabriel, uh, play Gabriel in The Walking Dead. So, I was like, hey, that's super dope. Uh, it's also so weird because, spoilers, he's got his eye situation in The Walking Dead. So, it's so weird now seeing him, like, oh, yeah, not having, like, the blind eye situation that he does in The Walking Dead. So, it's, like, weird to, to see, like, oh, yeah, just both of his normal eyes. Cause I'm so used to seeing him with one of his eyes being cloudy. Either way, uh, tangents and all that aside... He gets in an accident and obviously ends up losing the evidence because uh, one of the people working for uh, Blair Foster ended up grabbing the evidence first. I love that little bit about that lady who was working at like kind of that impound or whatever. And she's like, right, I, what I was doing on my phone was like business or whatever. And then when like a uh, wrestler and Sia showed up, she's still on her phone and she puts it away. I'm like, I guess it's supposed to be kind of like that. Gen Z, maybe, I don't know if she's supposed to be a millennial or like a Gen Z, like, is that supposed to be kind of a little bit of like a Gen Z or millennial mentality or something like that? But uh, Blair Foster is doing everything in her power to kind of cover this up. That woman is really, really good. I mean, to be fair, there are like TV shows built around characters like that. I mean, it's not the same thing, but it's still kind of, I mean, actually, it's actually the exact same thing where you get like a... um Oh my god, I'm blanking on Carrie Washington's character from um 
Olivia. I could remember the last name Pope, but I couldn't remember her first name, but Olivia Pope. It's very much like kind of a, like, that's what the whole show scandal was built around, a fixer. And so it is kind of like a, yeah, she's, she's in her Olivia Pope bag. Uh, using it more so for evil than Olivia Pope, but still. I watched a good chunk of Scandal. Like, Olivia probably had, like, she had those lines, but even she wasn't like, she, she was a good person trying to do the right thing in, in a lot of capacities. But either way, and may, maybe it's because it's been a while, so maybe I'm just not remembering the series. Maybe I'm looking back on Olivia in a lot more favorable light than maybe she really was. I don't know, either way. But uh, yeah, Blair, at the very least, is definitely using her powers for evil, like helping cover up like these companies who, like, there was a report that said, like, hey, these, these supplies like have some terrible stuff in it that could kill people, and they didn't recall it, and they've been on the shelves for like 11 years or something like that. And a report came out like 2017, and they've done everything they can and to bury it, so, and Larry was going to be the one that ended up exposing it, so, and obviously Blair does her thing so well as a fixer of like, hey, I'm going to first show up giving you a helping hand of like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be so nice, you need something, I'm going to take care of it, but then immediately it turns into a threatening situation, because I love that she, the I think, and maybe this speaks volumes, Who's the first person she reached out to? Wrestler. Because, hey, Wrestler, you've been in this position as this FBI agent for so long. I could get you in, like, a very, like, more higher political position. It's, like, something that's, what was it, the 13th District or something like that of, like, I don't, I don't, I can't remember if she was trying to get him a Congress job or something. She was trying to give him something related to Detroit because it's like, hey, they'll back you up because like, hey, you're a cop. You'll be like a hometown hero and stuff. Your dad died on the line to do it. It's like she did her due diligence. And I think it's also because he's been kind of in a position he has been for a while. And it's like, right, you could do so much good in your position. It does make me wonder, will it affect wrestler where he'll actually start thinking about, will I ever kind of go beyond just being a cop? Like, I like what I do, but like, would I be able to do more good in a higher position like that? But I think wrestler also wouldn't want to be the one that's connected to all that red tape and like politi the political side of things, I'm sure isn't really like his cup of tea. So it's just, he can do probably in his mind is like, I can do the most good without like as much like political BS getting in the way if I'm just a cop. I, I don't know. It's probably something that's going to be crossing his mind. I do love when Red calls him later on. It's like, well, I had to call the second string. It's like, did you call just to insult me? It's like, but that's the best reason to call you, Donald. Um, and I do love that she is smiling back there because I, she, like, wrestlers had to deal with Red's BS for over a decade. For Sia, she's still kind of in the honeymoon phase with it and stuff like that. Because I think it's like, Red is so obnoxious and charming, and that's why he, he makes, he's so lovable, you know? So I, I love that. But, um... I also love the scene with him and Dembe when they're trying to recognize the guy. And I love that he pulls out the magnifying glass and Dembe's laughing. He's like, oh, think about when you get my age. First the knees and then the eyes. And Dembe's like, trust me, I know. It's my shoulder. And they're laughing about it. And it's like, oh, we should go. Oh, you, I, this tattoo, it could be certain a certain thing. Oh, probably should go. And they both say at the same time, man. And he's like, oh. I miss us, Dimbe. We should hang out more. I was like, oh, that's super adorable. And then they're laughing about... Because, yeah, he doesn't see Dimbe. Like, aside from, like, when they're working cases, he doesn't get to see Dimbe. At least back when Dimbe was with him, it's like, they're together all the time. And it's like, they have not been together, like, on the, such a consistent basis, except for when the work comes up. Since, obviously, season eight's the last, season eight's the last time, you know, and obviously that was, like three years ago continuity wise i mean within the confines of the show like that was three years ago i mean obviously like two years ago in the real life but in the context of the show it was, like i can say cool hadn't it been like a year in between season nine and ten i keep forgetting that either way so I, I thought that was such a cute thing but i do love that he went down the uh to uh havana cuba which i was like oh you were just there uh, but I, I love that he ran into Manny, who's played by uh, David Zaza. And I was like, hey! Because I was like, I forgot I saw your name in the credits. That's awesome. Um, but he offered uh, Manny some boxing gloves that were, because his dad was a, a boxer. And he's like, yeah, like some of those memories were so, um, so memorable to me. And Red's playing a little hard to get. It's like, right, give me some information and I'll tell you about, I'll give you these gloves. But he even says later on, I like, I would have given to you. I actually believe Red would have, regardless of like, whether you gave me the information or not. I'm playing a little hardball, but I would have given it to you. I wouldn't have left with these gloves because I know he under he's like, I understand sentimentality. Once again, being a grandparent, being a parent, you know, and it's just, I, you know, Red is a sentimental person, especially in a time when he's giving away everything. 
You know, so it's like, I think that speaks volumes about Red. I also love the Weecha of it coming. That's why Weecha left. He's like, man, Weecha didn't leave to work for, um, what's his face? It's like, no, which is, it's a lot more complicated than that. But apparently she stops by every once in a while to talk to Manny. And Manny ended up passing a message toward the end of the episode. She's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, man. And Manny's like, me neither. It's like, uh, Red's such a complicated person because I love that Manny initially didn't want to help him because he's like, the last time I helped you with some information, you shot two police officers in, like that were kind of associates of mine in front of me. And even this guy that he's trying to get information, I was like, is anything going to happen to him? His uncle's actually a really good guy. Like, his uncle's a guy that I like, so like, he's a good friend of mine, so don't don't screw that up. It's like, don't worry, he's going to be fine. I love how Red helped him out. It was like, yeah, I had to help him with an immigration thing. I was like, what'd you do? Like, um... Would you do, uh, get his, uh, whole family, uh, asylum here? I mean, like, uh, got them, um, uh, uh, able to come here? And it's like, no, his mistress, his mother, two of his cousins, a friend from high school, and his dog. The dog was a real annoying thing, but he's like, I'll, I'll put that aside. I love it. It's just, I love, I love it. Once again, it's just so funny when Red chooses to handle things in a diplomatic, like, I'll help you, you help me, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours type of mentality, and other situations where he's just like, you know what, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna threaten you, I'm gonna pull out a gun and threaten to shoot you in the foot like he did last episode. So it's just always funny which situations Red's willing to, um end up helping out but uh, yeah so they ultimately end up getting Blair but Blair's not worried she's like alright I'm ready to make a deal and so she's not willing to hand over all her files because it's like I'm not stupid I'm gonna end up dead that way so it's like Hey, you give me something specific, I can I can help you. So they want the motor and son situation, which they were able to arrest the CEO because of that. But also there was something very specific, which uh, was like what December thirty first or something like that. Two thousand. It was like December something, uh, twenty thirteen. And so that ties into the other side of the episode where we have Dorf and Hudson uh, trying to bring it before a judge to try and get the FBI to reveal. Um, what they're doing, and so ultimately, the judge decides that it worked. the The benefits of keeping all that stuff, protecting the agents as well as the um informants and stuff like that, keeping their identity, it's like that does more good being kept quiet than brought to the surface. Like it, it, it doesn't have it doesn't the cost uh the 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 positive benefits don't outweigh the good of keeping all that secret and bringing it publicly. So, but the problem is Dorf's like, now that he smells blood in the water, cause he's like, now I'm even more determined. Like I, when Hudson brought this to me, I thought it'd be one thing. Now I realize you, he brought me a diamond because if you are willing to bend over this far, go this far to protect this secret, there must be some skeletons here. So he wasn't willing to let this go and neither is Hudson. But, uh, the info they got from Blair allowed them to blackmail Dorf. So it turns out his son was in a drunk driving accident and they buried it so that the blood never got tested and stuff like that. But the the girl he hit is now was paralyzed for the rest of her life. And the son wanted to come forward, but um his uh the one that was silenced, Dorf silenced his own son. So apparently he's been going from mental uh, uh, institution to mental institution ever since because his dad set that up so that he wouldn't confess to what he did. Because it's like, at that point, it's not even protecting your son anymore. Maybe in your own way, you're like, I am protecting you from yourself, but it's more so about protecting you and your legacy and position. So that's why they were able to get him to kind of step down. He's like, yeah, for personal reasons, which Hudson's not too happy about it because it's like, all right, the time is too coincidental. You want it to go public. Like, you don't have anything to go public with yet, but you do have names associated with this task force, being Panda Bakers in particular. So putting her in the limelight, throwing her name out there, will have a whole bunch of people asking, well, what is that task force? You are associated with it, and it puts the pressure on her, so she, they were hoping she would crack. And it's like, I don't think she would, because... Throwing anything out there about the task force would still affect her knowing what she now knows about, well, what Red did uh, to Wu Jing and everything, and also all the files being corrupted, removing any of his name. So it's like that wouldn't do her any benefit, but it still would screw her over in the long run because now a lot more people would probably put even more pressure on her, not just the public, but a lot of governmental people were like, right, this is too much of a headache we're dealing with. 
Panda Baker hand over whatever information there is to hand over. So she'd kind of probably, her hands would be tied in that situation most likely. Because I don't even think, she'd probably be able to somewhat salvage her career if she helped, like, reveal stuff about the task force. But I think it'd blow, do more damage than, like, she wouldn't be able to salvage it, truth be told, as I don't think. But I could be mistaken in that regard. But at the very least, there is the benefit of the Dorf family is going to be paying for that young woman's um, rehab and therapy and everything that and her her medical bills for the rest of her life. So there is some semblance of justice. Sadly, they had to make a deal with Blair Foster. So I mean, they got two. They benefited. It benefited themselves, and they also took down the CEO of Motor and so and so. It's like it all worked out in that regard. But lo and behold, it's like, oh, Hudson's not going to let this go. And the moment we saw Blair at the end of the episode, I was like, oh, she's going to reach out to Hudson, isn't she? Because she knows, like, right. She knows, she doesn't know the direct correlation, but she figures, like, well, there's got to be some connection. Because she knows that she probably got whispers about what Hudson's looking into a big task force. Seeing what ended up happening, she's like, for you to even come after me the way you have been means someone bigger is out there. Like, And whoever it was asked specifically about information about they knew it specifically a bit of dirt that they could use. And that was the whole dwarf situation. So it's like, OK, so she knows there's bigger gain out there so she can put two to two together. She hasn't figured out the task force thing, but she can put two and two together. So she probably knows at least wrestlers connected to this task force that Hudson's lo looking into. So can end up kind of connecting the threads in that regard. So the task force is okay for now, but the war, they won the battle, but the war is not over. So, and they both know that this is, isn't over, but they thought like, oh, Hudson doesn't have any powerful friends. It's like, yeah, but because they crossed Blair in an attempt to give themselves, because it, it is that double-edged sort of, yes, going after Blair benefited them. They didn't take her down, but they got Dwarf off their back. But at the end of the day, it's now led to her being an enemy, and now she's going to try and use this situation with Hudson to probably sniff out. Um, so I don't know if we're going to get more Blair in the future. I, I would assume we are, but she's going to be the backer in all of this because he like they don't run in the same circles. They don't operate the same way because Hudson is a good, upstanding guy, but it might be that thing in his attempt for justice and transparency and everything that's going on, uh, trying to bring, like, like, right, we can't let, like, clandestine stuff kind of happened behind the scenes we need transparency especially when it comes to like how like you know we don't know where all this money is going like all these millions are going like how is it really like yes there's there is the people they're putting away and stuff but it's still the thing of how is that being allocated yada yada so on and so forth right so i think it is a thing in attempt for justice uh, Hudson's going to make a deal with the devil. So it's going to be interesting to see when Red and Blair eventually have their sit down and talk. I don't think he's going to, I mean, it might be a situation where he ends up having to kill her, but I'd assume he'd try and benefit from that situation because I'd love to see the back and forth between them. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where um, everything ends up taking us going forward from here. Six episodes left of the blacklist. It's so wild that it's coming down to, like I said, we're not taking as many breaks. And I didn't look into the dates of all the episodes, but I know the date, like I brought up previously, I know the date for the series finale. And I don't know if that's going to be like the final episodes, actually two episodes, or they're probably airing it back to back. So like episodes 21 and 22 are going to be aired on the same night. But um, obviously going forward, like all the episodes are going to be on Thursday. Obviously I'm getting to this. Um, a little um, late uh, because of everything, but e either way, I'm I'm excited to see where all this ends up taking us in the next episode. Uh, we are continuing to set the stage for the end, as they kind of say in the promotion. The end is nigh. So, but um, that's really all I wanted to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.